Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Konstantin Karatkov from Russia. And today I want to discuss with you about life, energy, biological fields, and consciousness. And for this, I want to look to our screen. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> okay, here we are. And now we discuss about science of measuring energy fields and the awakened mind. I am a professor of physics, biophysics for more than 25 years. And I work in different universities of St. Petersburg in Russia and uh, I uh, have a lot of activity in the world, lecturing, doing seminars, workshops. And we have very interesting moment in the time of our development. So we are living in 21st century and we have tremendous transformation in this century. And this situation of this last two years with COVID demonstrate that it's really new, absolutely new type of life in the world. First of all, this transition from resource, resource age to the information age. It means that in 21st century, in all previous centuries, it was important to produce some material stuff. And the most rich people was people who was able to produce something, to keep some treasures. Now, the most rich people, people who are producing information. So we transform to information of age. Then we now have all the information network and we are unable to exist without Google, without our phones, and we can be connected worldwide. And in principle, this is world consciousness network because at any moment you can connect with any person in the world and we can exchange consciousness and we understand that not, we are not dependent on the color of our of our skin of our age of our gender we are all the same and now we're having new and new uh, ways how we can derive energy and energy is the basis of civilization and of course we are moving to the medicine of health but today i want to discuss with you new trends in the study of consciousness we have many conferences about this, many discussions. And the first question, what it is? What it is consciousness? Uh, now we have tremendous movement when we try to meet together science and spirituality. And the main question is who we are. Are we clever monkeys or God things, beings? What is the aim of life? What is soul? what is happening after death. So those are many questions. And of course, uh, the main question is, what is consciousness? Is it product of the brain? Or it is part of the universal spirit. So we know that we are individual souls. And every one of us is individual being, and we are part of the one Gaia organism. So we can formulate this question very easy. Has God created brain or brain created God? And the key scientific questions are, is consciousness a product of a brain? What is mystical experience? What are altered states of consciousness? Does consciousness exist without the body? What is near-death experience? Does consciousness exist after death? What are reincarnation memories? So we see that um, there are many scientific questions. And in our research, we try to answer uh, at least some of those questions. And now we have two concepts, two theories of consciousness. There's a classical theory that tells us that everything comes from neurons 
from neural networks, same way as we have it in artificial intelligence. And that's why we have many discussions whether artificial intelligence would be as clever or much more clever than our brain, than our human conscience, and would it be dangerous to a person. And now we have a lot of discussions about combining our human brain with different electronic devices. And of course, our mobile phone is the first example, but now we have a lot of uh, discussions, a lot of science, a lot of research about implanting some electronic device in the human body and in particular the human brain. And we have another theories, quantum theories of conscience, that gives us a much more deep understanding of this. And uh, now one of the key topics that we have in quantum theories, um, I wouldn't come deep into the discussion, there's a, a concept of uh, non-locality or einstein podolsky rosen paradox. The topic is uh, Einstein uh, did not accept quantum theory. For him, it was too mechanistical. And he was able to create many paradoxes that was uh, unable to be answered by that time. And one of the paradox was as follows. Let's imagine we have one uh, quantum subject. Let me it may be atom, it may be molecule, it may be any subject. And at some moment, this quantum subject emits two particles. It may be again photons or electrons. And those particles, they fly to different parts of the universe. And then at one part of the universe, something changes the quantum numbers of this particle. And in accordance with quantum mechanics, if those particles belong to one and the same quantum system, so they should have different quantum numbers. So if we change this, immediately should be changed another one. And Einstein told, this is nonsense. This is total paradox. Because uh, those particles may be in absolutely different parts of the world. And we know that it's impossible to have communications faster than the speed of light. So, and now uh, we name those particles entangled particles. And it was demonstrated in experiments um, in Switzerland um, in the 20th century that it is a real physical effect, quantum effect. So this is the basis of uh, many quantum theories, quantum entanglement. And now we have a lot of research in this topic. Another question still is uh brain is it computer made of meat so or is it something else and it was many discussions about this again many topics about this and uh, many top level scientists defended the idea of complexity of life so many scientists like schrodinger uh, einstein not about newton bohr and other many others uh, and of course, many neuroscientists, they believed and they claimed that life is much more than just mechanistical process. And now we have the way how we can study this. Now we have many, many uh, research lines that can study brain in the process of uh, some activity. And particularly it was a lot of um, measurements, in particular it was it is very famous uh, scientist in New, New York, who was measuring uh, activity of the brains of nuns, uh, mon monks, people in deep meditation, uh, and he was doing this with PET scan, uh, which allows to see uh, brain in the, its activity. And it was shown that all these mystical experiences, it's not just imagination, but it's a real transformation of the brain. And uh, uh, now we have many discussions about sometimes spiritual brain. And of course, another question, very important question, can mind operate outside the brain? Can consciousness directly influence physical reality? And I want to show you a little uh, movie, uh, which tells, discuss about this.
can humans find a time when they will allow space for what they don't believe is possible? For 300 years, science has asked the question, is there a field of energy that connects everything? Where do our thoughts go when we die? Someday, there will be inventions in physics, and when they do, you will see that consciousness is energy. What human beings think collectively can be measured. We have hundreds of thousands of molecules. They can exchange vibrations all over around the field. This is chemistry, but it's a kind of dancing chemistry. In consciousness, we can communicate and perceive anywhere throughout the entire universe. Energy increased dramatically. Distance does not matter. The field is the origin of everything. What is a thought? Thought is a particle of light. We can measure it. Our thoughts are broadcast to the field. What happens in one part of the field influences other parts of the field in the same instant. And this is deep, profound. So this is a clip of a beautiful movie, The One Field and you can find this movie uh, somewhere on the internet. And um, we participated a lot in this movie and I tell about this later on. But let's come back to consciousness and a very interesting topic that Einstein proposed his most famous equation uh, where he proved that energy and mass, they are equivalent. So um, mass is just condensed energy. And what does it mean? Energy. energy is our consciousness. What does it mean? Mass is our body. And uh, light is our soul. So this way we can talk about energy. And of course, when we talk about consciousness, the main thing, one of the questions is what is the difference between my consciousness and consciousness of my dog? Because I think that nobody would deny idea that dogs and cats, they have very developed consciousness. And I developed idea of the levels of consciousness, where on different levels of consciousness, there are different levels of understanding reality. And we can talk about group consciousness, we can talk about collective consciousness. And of course, we need to talk to understand that this is all related to higher planes of reality. You can find discussion of those uh, ideas in um, my books. So, and we understand, without light, there are no life. All living cells of plants, animals and humans can continuously emit ultraviolet light. Radiations, and we name this line is biophotonics. So, Biophotons, this is the light within cells. And this is essential for cell communication. So it is increased cell energy. And it reflects different states of health and disease. So it was always those people who was able to feel and to understand and even see this light. And uh, in many ancient uh, icons, in many sculptures, ancient sculptures in different countries, in different regions, we see light, a halo of light or aura uh, surrounding holy people. Now it's a part of scientific research and we have big research line in this field. And again, I will show you one little clip.
Okay, so now we discussed about Biowell, and uh, this line has long history from 18th century, and was many different researchers, interesting people uh, who've been doing this in 19th century, 20th century. Between them, a very famous in 20th century became family Kirlian, who developed the name Kirlian photography. And by that time, all this light coming from different subjects in electromagnetic field was recorded by photography. It, it was very interesting, but of course, it wasn't really very scientific. So we made computer jump, computer leap from Kirlian photography to computer processing. And we did it in 1995. And this was named as electrophotonic imaging, uh, API. GDV, biophotonics, and this is all light diagnostics. So we are measuring light coming from fingers, all 10 fingers. Then we transform this image in the different images of energy field around the body in different information. And we extract this information from, uh, diff from every person. So uh, we understand the principle of this. Very important to understand that this is quantum processes. So those processes based on activity of uh, electrons, photons, and excitation of emission of photons by electromagnetic field. So we named it stimulated electrophotonic emission. And a very important part of this, it is artificial intelligence. So we use image processing from this black and white uh, image, we create this colorful image. We can study images of different subjects. For example, with this image of water, uh, this uh, distilled water, and this those are water under different pyramids. I have many patents in different countries, 15 patents, more than two scientific papers, and 10 books in six different languages. And you can find those books on Amazon.com. In some books, I discuss topics for people, uh, for just lay people. I, in some books, they are more scientific. And you can find this all on our website. Of course, much more information you can find on the websites of our friends and our colleagues, and in particular, Nima Frashat and uh, Tiffany. Blasco, uh, Bascotti, who operate, who work with this your quantum university. So it's all part of biowell technology. And the principle of this technology is that we make a bridge. We are using traditional Chinese medicine ideas, ideas of mediums. We are using, using Ayurvedic medicine, ideas of chakras, and we use ideas of Western medicine, systems and organs. So we make a bridge between uh, Western knowledge, Western understanding, and uh, Oriental wisdom. And we have clear understanding what means, what does it mean strong energy field, when you have strong field, and it is correlated with strong immunity, and it means that, that you are protected, protected from any intrusions, protected from viruses, and you may be not afraid of any coronavirus. And of course, chakras, when they are balanced, 
when they are aligned. Of course, it is indication of very um, high concentration, very stable uh, mental state of a person. And uh, it may be done this line after some meditation or for some people, I've seen this type of chakras, in particular for people who meditate a lot, of, of people who are doing yoga and uh, between many uh, top level business people. Um, health problem, they are reflected in different outbursts, in different falls, breaks, or just, and of course, chakras in this case, not so well balanced. Stress creates many holes, many breaks. And of course, energy field is, uh, chakras is totally different as well. And we understand what does it mean, any shift of any chakra, and we can make interpretation of this. And stress may be even uh, this um, type. But of course, it's not only pictures. Those are a lot of numbers, a lot of measurements. And we are measuring level of stress. We are measuring energy. We are measuring balance, uh, organs balance. And of course, we have big statistics. Now we have more than a million measurements on our database. And we understand what it is optimal for stress, for energy, and what does mean low energy, what does mean high energy. So very high energy is not always very good, and or same as very low stress. We can measure sympathetic parasympathetic balance, and uh, we have many correlation with measurements with, with HRV, heart rate variability with uh, skin conductivity, with psychological measurements. So it's a lot of data published in various journals. Very important that we can see transformation of person of energy field before and after any treatment. For example, before and after uh, treatment, light treatment in this case, or before and after uh, uh, talking on the phone or deep meditation. Of course, people who have some uh, health issues, they have absolutely totally different energy fields. And again, we have very specific features of those energy fields. We have many our friends and customers who are all worldwide on all continents. We have our main centers in uh, Europe, in Hong Kong, United States, uh, in St. Petersburg, Russia, we have uh, our research centers, and uh, we have uh, many, many friends and dear colleagues worldwide. So we are, we are having community of friends and colleagues who work with our system. And main areas of application of electrophotonic imaging. Those are first of all medicine, and we have a lot of data in medicine. We can, uh, in the research, they can, um, make analysis of cancer with um, high level of precision using neural network. Um, we uh, have a lot of research in consciousness study, in sport. In, in Russia, this approach is accepted by the Ministry of Sport as one of the key methods of analyzing uh, athletes in Olympic teams, Paralympic teams, and we have many uh, dissertations defended on uh, this topic in medicine, in sport, in consciousness study. Next level is water and material testing. We have special installations for measuring water and materials, psychology, and energy of space. Uh, this year we have developed a mobile version of our biowell, and you see it is quite compact. You can keep it in your purse, and in a, it operates with a mobile phone, with any type, Android uh, or Apple, my phone, and um, so you can use it in everyday activity. And uh, we just are in production of this uh, mobile version, and it will be ready by the end of the year. But this is not only uh, measurements. It's some type of treatment as well. We are having this biocore project, biocore device. So we are measuring energy field. Based on this energy field, we create individual music. Individual for every person. 
we apply this music to some special device by horn. This device emits very high frequency. So people have earphones with sound, very specific sound, and with frequency that emitted by a special electrode. And this is tremendously efficient transformation of human mental state. So we have hundreds and hundreds of cases when people claim that by using this biocore device, they were able to get rid of insomnia, of depression, of anxiety, and it helped them to, to increase the quality of their life. So now we produce this device and a lot of people use it in the world. And of course, by using this device, you can measure this and you can see the transformation of your energy field. But now let's go back to a consciousness study. We have several lines of consciousness study. So consciousness influence the physical sensors. Consciousness influence the water, influence of people to each other, telepathy, direct vision or mental training, energy of active zones, and influence of active zones to people energy transformation after death. So you see it is many different topics. And telepathy experiments has long history because in Soviet time, I was involved in telepathy research in Soviet Union. And our goal was to establish telepathy communication between uh, uh, some people, uh, between submarines and satellites. So we did many experiments of this kind using many devices and two people were sitting in different parts of the world and we did not send messages, but people sent emotions to each other. And using this equipment, which they were wired with, it was possible to measure the influence of this process. So later on in 21st century, we did many experiments in the mountains, in Nepal, uh, in Venezuela, in different parts of the world. And it was shown that when people come to this interrelation, they have so-named virtual brain. So their brains are having same synchronized activity. It is a very interesting process. So it comes in telepathy. It uh, is happening when people are in love. Uh, and we have many data on this topic as well. So it is a measurable process and we can measure this dynamic of this process with our instruments with viral. So it's all part of altered states of consciousness. And we have in our papers, we created a map of altered state of consciousness. And altered state of consciousness, not only uh, people sitting in deep meditation or doing telepathy. Those are many cases in everyday life when people transform to alter state of consciousness. For example, uh, mothers giving breastfeeding to their children, to their babies, they very often transform to alter state of consciousness. So this is the power of this process. And of course, we did many experiments with top level uh, healers, I, it, it, I was involved in the process from the um, 80s, 1980s, with top level healers in Russia, then worldwide. And it was possible to take measurements and to see that with their intention, those people can influence water, can influence sensors. And it is based on the idea of triple manifestation of human being. So we have our physical body, we have our mind and we have our soul. And this is the basis of all our concepts in consciousness study. Later on <clears throat> in the first century, I was able to meet top level healers in the world. And we did many experiments with Dr. Jody Spencer in the United States, Christos Tersinakis in Germany, Victor Felipe in Germany. And we've been able to measure their influence to hundreds of people. So all of them, they do workshops and all of them, they have big groups of followers. And we were able to demonstrate that during their workshops for all the people, 
stress level comes down and energy increases. And of course, if you look to chakras, then chakras become much more balanced. So uh, we did many experiments, uh, and we had a lot of data published on this topic. Yeah, so we are measuring water, and we have special different installations to measure water. So people try to influence water from the distance. Uh, first experiment they can do nearby, then they can do it from different uh, distance. And you see, this is intensity of initial water. And you see it's some dynamic line. So we're measuring uh, in time. And we're measuring some parameters of light coming from water, some biophotons. And then we ask someone to send intention to this water from some distance, or for example, from Japan to Russia, or from United States to Russia, or from Germany to Russia. And we see effect. You see, it was before and it is after. It's absolutely clear, statistically significant effect. Of course, it may be increase of energy or it may be decrease of energy. It may be some transformation of energy. And it shows us that uh, really when we deal with water, we need to understand what is very sensitive subject. It has its own life. It has its own energy. And when we send our intention to water, if it's positive intention, it can give you, it can give water positive impact. Would it be negative intention? Then, of course, it may be absolutely negative effect. So when you're preparing food, be very careful in doing this. We did many experiments with a very famous researcher, Lynn McTaggart who was able to organize, and she's doing it now from time to time as well, um, thousands of people worldwide. And at some particular moment, those people were sending their intention to, for example, our laboratory. And uh, we can measure this effect. And in most of those experiments, we see statistically significant change. And it's not only water. We have special sensor. The name of this sensor is Sputnik. And I've been developing this sensor for many, many years, for decades. Uh, now it is well developed. Now we have, we can find a lot of information on this website, biowell.com. And the principle of this operation is based on so named uh, Tesla coils. So we have so named Tesla coil in our instrument. And we have open uh, contour of the second coil. And when we apply some impulse, some voltage to this coil, then uh, here we have uh, electromagnetic wave. So those are standing electromagnetic waves distributed in space. Because we apply those uh, impulses in short impulses. And that's why it's not just continuous uh, emission, but it's, it's uh, standing waves. Then let's imagine that we have someone in this room. We are conductive subjects and we are changing this condition in this room. So uh, when we have, for example, emotions, we change our conductivity, we change condition of our blood circulation, microcirculation, and it influences our self and it influences space around ourselves. So all people influence space around themselves. And of course, it may be one people or it may be a group of people. And of course, this would be recorded. This would be uh, reflected to the signal of scooting device. So that's why we are measuring before and after, and we see really strong transformation. We did these measurements uh, uh, from distance, time distance. Usually, we typically we take some measurements before for at least one hour or even more. And then we see clear transformation during intention. So 
uh, this device, this putting device, people now use in their everyday activity for recording their own meditation, for recording uh, their emotions. And later on, we'll discuss about uh, the influence of uh, different places. We did many experiments uh, with top level killers in the world. Uh, for example, this is Dr. Eric Thorn from the United States. He's very famous. And of course, by his influence, we immediately see transformation of energy field. And with Sputnik, we can detect his influence on a big group of people. This is a record of eight hours workshop. And you see it was different events, different transformation of up and down. But then Eric came in to the audience. He's a fantastic presenter. And he was able to start his presentation. And you see this transformation of energy. So we did many experiments with him. And it is reflected in uh, our book that we did together with Professor Gary Schwartz, Professor William Tiller, who did their own measurements. And we're discussing all these topics in the books. Same as, for example, Jody Spencer, Dr. Jody Spencer discussed uh, this in his own books. We can measure, for example, in terms of music. And I was able to take measurement of top level singers in the world. And this is Dmitry Khrastovsky, uh, who is singing with, uh, with top level singers. And uh, we were able to measure top all moments of this presentation. And we did many experiments of this kind. So we were able to take all those measurements. And uh, of course, uh, it's not only interesting effect. So this is measurement of a uh, very famous opera conductor before and after the symphony. And you see it was his initial energy field and it's after. You see, so it's clear that uh, uh, this activity is not very uh, simple, but at the same time, we know that for opera conductor, they have the highest lifespan in the world, the, the highest. And of course, we are measuring influence of rock music. And we found that uh, under the influence of rock music, it's always transformation of energy field, some increase in the beginning, but then inevitably decrease. For me, this increase may be for two minutes, <laughs> then it can decrease with rock music. For young children, of course, for young people, it may be for many uh, days. So we did many measurements in Russian temples, in many temples of the world, nearby uh, top level icons. And we were able to see effect. This is measurement nearby icon. And this is in this same temple in different parts of the temple. We've been, um, I was able to take measurement in different cemeteries. And again, it was shown that energy uh, for example, in temples and in cemetery, it has absolutely different uh, character. So the energy on uh, in uh, on cemeteries, these are much more uh, energetic, but at the same time, it is much more dangerous for people. You can find a lot of discussion in this about this topic in my books, in particular in the book, The Energy of Consciousness. And of course, uh, one very important part of our activity is measuring effect of mobile phones, of electromagnetic fields, of different protection devices to people. And we do a lot of measurements of this kind, a lot. And it was really shown that it's really uh, very important part. Uh, very interesting topic. This is measuring energy after death because this is one of the topic that is very, very important for all of us and for all of us. And um, I did a series of experiments of this kind, and I want to, for you to see a little clip. Oh, sorry, it doesn't show up. OK, it doesn't matter. No. 
Okay, no, no problem. So uh, I did many experiments with uh, dead bodies, and we were able to uh, select dead bodies immediately after this. And uh, we took their hands, their fingers, placed on the electrode, and we've been doing measurements for many days day and night for 24 hours. <clears throat> so we had a team of doctors, medical professionals, who did this type of measurements. And uh, it was shown that immediately after death, of course, we have some transformation of uh, energy field. But what was very important, that this transformation depends on the type of death. So when people come to death in very calm, senior condition, then uh, they have very, uh, very uh, stable process of dying. When it is uh, some unusual death, unpredictable death, of course, it's a okay, big difference. And the most interesting was cases when it was murder, suffocation, uh, when people was able to see their death state coming, but they had clear understanding that they are dying, but it was inevitable. And uh, in this case, we had transformation of the energy for days and days. We had a very strong increase of energy at night. And of course, it, we associated this with existence of some spirits. And in some cases, we were able even to feel those spirits. So it's clear that transformation to after death process, it's not just end of everything, but it's threshold. It is transition to absolutely different state. And we have a lot of topics that give us uh, indication that it, this transition is not a simple. And you can find a lot of ideas of this kind in my book, uh, Light uh, Afterlife. Another very important topic of our activity is measuring energy of space or geoactive zones, historical monuments. We are based on the idea of five elements of nature. We are using uh, our Sputnik device. And uh, with this Sputnik device, we can measure a lot of processes. For example, we can measure uh, the, uh, sun eclipse, and we did many measurements of this kind, and it's possible to detect the sun eclipse. We are measuring different ceremonies. For example, uh, we had ceremonies at the lakes with Dr. Imorta, and we were able to measure all moments of this ceremony. We've been doing measurements at uh, far north of Russia when we have monasteries, big monasteries uh, with many monks. And we have little islands with ancient spirals. So it was found that the spirals come to Celtic times. And uh, it is possible to take measurements because it's absolutely deserted island. And it was possible to see that uh, inside the spiral, energy is totally different from outside. And all the people who was inside the spirals, they had totally different energy from people who was outside the spirals. So it's clear that all these spirals, all these Celtic monuments, those are not just uh, some uh, tribal superficial, but it is real places of strong energy. And ancient people was able to feel those energy. And we had many experiments of this kind. We had expeditions to uh, far part of Venezuela and the border of Brazil when there are only Indians living, and we had to come through jungles, and camping for several days. And then came, finally, we came to very high wall, so an Torreima wall. And at the top of this wall, this is absolutely unusual vegetation, unusual vegetation. And um, local Indian, they believe that this is the mother of uh, water. And this at the top of the Sarayma. And of course, I did measurements in Savannah and the top of Raima, and it was shown that it's totally different energy. 
down and, and uh, the top. And of course, it had influence on people as well, the human energy field. So it is energy before and after, before and after. And for all members of our expedition, it was a really big change of this energy. Then it was very interesting expedition to Indians of uh, Colombia, Sierra Nevada mountains. Because those Indians, they keep their tribal life as they did for thousands of years. There are practically no road to come there. And it's really a big challenge to come there. <laughs> but finally, you are coming to beautiful valleys where the people live uh, who are very calm, very nice people. They don't, don't allow all foreigners to come there. So it's very difficult to come there. And uh, they allowed us to come. And we did those measurements in this village with many people. So energy was very beautiful, very calm over there, all in different parts of this village. But it was one storm when their elders accept energy from the space, from the universe. And at this particular place, energy was totally different. So it was really beautiful. Uh, I did measurements with crop circles in England. And uh, we were able to come there with Lucy Pringle, very famous researcher, just at the moment on Saturday when this crop circle was formed on Friday. And it was shown that the energy outside and inside the crop circle is also totally different. So it was many, many experiments with, uh, for example, Peru, with shamans, it was shown that again it is strong transformation of images of energy with shamans with uh, and i have many data in my book with uh, bosnian pyramids dr sam As asmanagic it's uh, interesting fantastic discovery of this famous archaeologist he found great pyramids and he found tunnels under those permits. And again, we were able to take measurements of all these events. So it is a lot of different experiments, a lot of different activity. Uh, so we have uh, many people who are involved in this activity. Every year we have uh, our big Congress, Science Information Spirit in St. Petersburg. It is first weekend of July. And last year, this Congress comes in Zoom, of course. And uh, it is absolutely open, so we invite everybody to join this activity. 